Welcome back to the channel guys. So today we are talking about the epitome of tanks. The beast that is the Panther. My favourite tank of the Second World War. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. But other than that, let's get into it. So for the paint scheme, the one we're going to go for this time is the top one right here from July 1943. Just a two-tone. Um, I have got a three tone variant as well, which I'll be uploading at some point in the future, but just wanted to start with this. So for the miniature, I started off with a black spray paint, and then I used a sort of a matte uh, olive, well, it's not an olive green, it's kind of close to a uh, Russian uniform, but it isn't. It's just a cheap paint that I got from the store. And then kind of xenophil using that from the top, so I didn't get it underneath onto the tracks. Next, I've gone for khaki, which is model colour, and I'm using that to do the, the wheels themselves, and then we'll be using the same colour to put the pattern onto the vehicle. So, I don't know about you guys, but I find actually painting on the patterns to be quite relaxing, unlike the, uh, the white belts and straps on the uh, British troops from <laughs> the Napoleonic period. Uh, I mean, with camouflage, for the most part, it's there to try and break up the pattern of a vehicle, um, either to replicate the sunlight coming through trees, or also just in the distance so the vehicle blends in more with the surrounding terrain. So you don't actually need to be that perfect when you're painting them. So even if you don't consider yourself the best painter in the world, I mean, I know I'm not one of the best painters in the world, so it suits me quite nicely. Uh, but through a lot of the texts and first-hand accounts that I've read and heard of uh, when it came to the paint schemes, there were more or less uh, patterns that were designed, but as the war progressed, as paint became scarcer, um, when they were coming out of factories it tended to be spray painted on, but even in some cases where they'd run out they would just use paintbrushes uh, in the field, they would just do field paint jobs using whatever paints they could get, so although there were standard colours that were supposed to be used, in practicality it was use whatever was suitable at the time. So that gives us as painters quite a scope that it doesn't matter if we don't use the exact colour, it doesn't matter, um, which is quite nice. And same for the actual pattern scheme themselves. Again, if you want to be absolutely perfect, then you can <laughs> you can delve into all of the details and find um, historical paint uh, paintings, photos, sorry, and you can paint it up to be immaculately identical to a real world vehicle. However, if you're looking more for speed of getting your army on the table, then you can just do what looks good and what looks reasonable, and that's what these are for me. Uh, these aren't going to be showpiece miniatures, they're just tabletop miniatures. Now after that, the tracks, I like to paint them in the sort of dark chocolate brown colour. I know some people say, I'll oh, paint them black, paint them silver, uh, but I find the dark brown is a good base coat for them. I mean, how often do you see tracks that are black or fully silver? Very rarely. They tend to be a dark-ish colour where they're usually caked in a bit of grime and then you'll see chinks where they've chipped uh, little bits of silver showing through or steel showing through I should say not silver um, and again depending on the location they'll either be caked in mud if it's a very wet season or if they're in a more arid then it's going to be covered in dust so I find the dark brown is quite a good base and then we'll build up with a, a lighter dry brush later I know when I used to be based at Bovington with the Tank Museum right next door, I would spend pretty well all my free time down there. That's how much of a nerd I am. Um, but just the Panther Tank would take up most of my time, followed by the Tigers. Uh, I just love the, the style and the camouflage patterns. I mean, the Allied Tanks, some did have camouflage, and you see more of it actually in the desert um, of North Africa, rather than the, the more sort of standard plain green of the sort of Normandy campaigns. But just the German patterns, they just look awesome. Well, to me anyway. Next, I was just using plain black to do the uniform on the driver and the commander. Nothing really extra needs to be said on that. Again, these miniatures, they do have quite a bit of detail. So if you wanted to, 
you could go in and you could actually and you had a steady enough hand you could paint in all of the the piping around the edges of the uh, the collar tabs and you could really make them good but for me again I'm not going that far into the detail this is just a a miniature for the table I think it was on one of Mark Felton's uh, videos recently, they were talking about vehicles that had been seen in the Ukraine conflict, and they've dragged out, or this was actually last year, but they dragged out a few of the old tanks from some of their museums, and so people had seen Panther tanks, and I think there was Panzer IV actually on the battlefield, not being used, but more as roadblocks, which is quite interesting. So next we're using Tamiya Flesh, uh, Flat Flesh, sorry. And again, just for the hands and face of the two crew members. Yeah, I have found, as I said in some of the other videos, this paint does go a bit a bit glumpy. Um, just after a few few moments of being exposed to the air. However, if you add a little bit of flow improver, um, it seems to do the trick and allow it to not get lumpy and not be pulled off by the paintbrush. So, little tip there. So I do have five panthers to paint up, and I'm not too sure at this stage whether I should do them all in the same paint scheme, or whether I should mix and match the paint schemes a little bit more. Um, any ideas on that, just let me know in the comments below. So at this stage I just finished the wash, and it was a homemade wash using Flow Improver, Matte Medium, and Brown. And now it's time to go in and start picking out the details. For the exhausts, <coughs> pardon me, I went for a bit of a mix, so I used black, silver and bronze, just to try and get that slightly sort of rusty appearance that you often see on exhaust pipes that have been used for a long time. Usually the paint sort of burns off and you are just left with that sort of rough, rough look. And then we went over the whole vehicle again with a dry brush, this time just using khaki again. and. I found that just using the khaki, seeing as that's the same colour as used for the camouflage, uh, the two kind of blend quite nicely and yeah, it works nicely. One thing I did miss was I did use leather brown for the wooden uh, tool handles. But there we go. So overall, it was actually, I think, it took about 20 minutes to paint the tank, so a little bit longer than the Shermans from previous week. Um, but that's because you've got pattern to do. But overall, nice, quick, easy, tabletop standard. And I'm happy with it. So can't wait to actually get another game in. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Please like, subscribe, leave comments below, and I'll see you next time.